morning, and we welcome to HB Hole Field here in Versailles, Ohio, where tonight WSM brings you an MAC football matchup. The Coldwater Cavaliers are in town to play the Versailles Tigers. Our presenting sponsor today is the People's Bank. We are invested in the communities we serve. Your bank, your way. Mark Stein, Dave Bowen here at, from Versailles. Dave, uh, interesting matchup. First of all, it's a really wonderful weather night, but Coldwater comes in here. They're 8-0. They're 6-0 in the conference, and they've got a conference championship to play for. Mark Shine, it is a fantabulous night for football. It's great to be your wingman, and you're right. Coldwater comes in undefeated with a lot to play for, and that's where our keys really begin. they got to stay locked into the now. You know, it's October. It's at time of the season where Halloween's around and it's peekaboo time. They cannot peek ahead. They've got to stay locked into the now or this Versailles team will take advantage of it. And then they got to let the playmakers make plays. Balin Blockberger, their quarterback, outstanding. Pot cutter and Depweg at running back. Welsh and Elander at receiver. Spread that ball around. Keep the Versailles defense on its heels and that potent cold water offense will show itself. And then finally, as you said, they're undefeated. This program, this team cannot find boredom in success. they got to stay locked into the now, and that way that will make next week a very, very fun week in preparation for Week 10. Dave, four weeks ago tonight, Versailles was flying along at 5-0. and That was the monsoon, the, the horrible weather night. They lost to Marion Local here rather convincingly. They're on a three-game slide since then. They need to right the ship this evening. They really do, and, and it's a – really strong program. We know for sales football, but in the last three games, they are 96 and 7 as far as points are concerned. They have been outscored 96 to 7. So they got to make some adjustments, Mark, but they got to adjust accordingly, especially on the offensive side of the ball. One touchdown in the last three games against very solid programs in Marion Local, Anna, and Minster, but they have to adjust, but don't panic and make sure the kids, the players, see it as an adjustment and not as throwing the, the baby out with the bathwater. Stay locked in. And then they have to maintain unity. Another big piece with that three-game losing streak, 16 seniors on this roster. They have got to come together and lead this team. And when your players do that, you can compete any night of the week. And then finally, fight for the friendly confines. Currently, Versailles is ninth in their region. They can come away with a victory tonight and or next week, and they still can put themselves in position to have a home game. It's my first time here, Mark. This place is a beautiful facility. It's great to be here. I'm sure uh, Versailles would love to be hosting in Week 11. It is a beautiful facility on a wonderful night. We've got a cold water team playing for an undefeated season in the league championship. We've got a Versailles team fighting their way into the playoffs. We're going to be back with the opening kickoff after this. You're watching high school football on WOSN. We're back at Versailles High School, almost ready for our kickoff this evening of this matchup between the Coldwater Cavaliers and the Versailles Tigers. First quarter sponsor tonight is brought to you by Rural First, the leader in rural lending. Rural First can help you live closer to what matters. Mark Shine and Dave Bowen here. Dave, it will be about 65 at kickoff time. It will be about 45 by the time we end this thing as the sun goes down. But uh, for late October, it is a beautiful night. It is absolutely gorgeous. And as you said, the sun going down. Usually we have the sun still up at kickoff, but the lights are on. Uh, we've got orange and white and black. It's cold water. It's Versailles. It's high school football. And uh, there's virtually no wind this evening. That is not an issue. The cold water Cavaliers has the visiting team will be wearing white jerseys this evening. And of course, for sales, will be in the home orange tops with their black pants. We're ready for kickoff duties right now. This will be done by the for sales Tigers. It will head down and be tracked down in the end zone. Tracked down by Ethan Elander and Coldwater will take the football first. For sales, uh, Coldwater won the toss and deferred. So Versailles kicked off. Yeah, that was Leland Bolin. Nice, strong leg to put that one in the end zone. Make Coldwater start on their own 20-yard line. The offense is engineered by Balin Blockberger. He wears number 15. He's a 6'4 senior. And in the backfield along with him, 
Shifting to his left is Cody Depwig. This will be a handoff to Depwig, and he bursts up the middle. Depwig will pick up about five on first down. Does a nice job, a nice hole by that offensive line. Rudy Kremer at center, and on the right side, Trent Ebbing at guard, and Tyler Jones at tackle. They do a nice job of giving him some space, and when you can pick up five or six on first down, that makes the playbook very available on second and short. This is a team that will alternate uh, running backs. Depwick will stay in this time. He will be on the right hip of Balaam Blackburger. Depwick has 155 yards rushing and four scores. Same play other side, and this time he's not going anywhere as he runs right into the arms of number 81 for Versailles, and that's Luke Kaiser. Yeah, Kaiser shoots the gap and makes it third and a uh, long four right now, Mark, but that's just what Versailles needed as uh, Coldwater got a good start on that first play. So now it's up to the versatility of this Coldwater offense. They got a runner pass. Blockburger's completed 78 of 111 passes this year. Two interceptions. He's only he's thrown 15 touchdown passes this year, and he's going to run himself. He's going to pick up and did not get to the first down sticks. I believe that is number 42, the yep. leading tackler for Versailles, James Schmidtmeyer, second leading score or tackler in the MAC, 60 tackles on the season. Uh, yeah, he's been making some contact. Let's see if they choose to go for this. It is fourth down from the 29 wow. yard line. They need a yard here yeah. at the very opening quarter here. Interesting. Three conservative run plays, but they're going to go on it fourth and short. That they will. Blockberger will go under center this time. Here's a snap, handoff, and trying to get to the sticks is Miles Potcotter. And I don't think he got there, Dave. No, the linesmen are coming in from the sides, and they have him short of the 30-yard line. And it is a turnover on downs. Just what the doctor ordered if you're Versailles. Great job by that defense on this first drive. Well, they gave up five on first down. Could not pick up five more on the ensuing three downs, and that will bring the football in a very advantageous position for the quarterback for Ryan Jones's team, and that's Ethan Wilker. Ethan wears number three. The junior quarterback. Got Kanapke in the backfield with him, and Kanapke, he couldn't get anywhere because he ran into a very angry Miles Potcutter. That's if Ross Francis ran that one. Yeah. 29. Pot cutter and Depwig, your leading tacklers for Coldwater. As you mentioned in the pregame, they both come in with 57 tackles. That's good enough to be third in the MAC. Did you think he might have been a little angry? He didn't pick <laughs> yeah. up the first down. He's trying to make up uh -huh. for that because he came in there in a hurry. It's a two yard loss on first down, so it's second and 12 from the 31. Wilker will be alone in the backfield this time. Here's a snap, Wilker, three-man rush. Gunned over the middle. Did he catch it? He did not. Big hit in the backfield there by Mason Welch. And he laid it to Tyler Bargy coming over the middle. Mason Welch, the rover on defense. And boy, was <laughs> sent Rover right yeah, over. He, he was in the right place. Did a great job of keeping his head up. Made good physical contact with the receiver. Mm. And uh, both guys get up, obviously. That's great to see. But nothing cheap or dirty there. And Mason could have really, really laid that receiver out. Made Ethan, great physical contact. Ethan Wilker is 64 of 127 on the season. He's thrown four interceptions, 802 yards, and five touchdowns. And he is looking at third and 12. Wilker to throw, he's flushed out of the pocket, going to throw it deep, got time, and it goes over everybody's head. So it falls incomplete, and we'll go to fourth and 12. Ethan Elander, the cornerback for Coldwater, the closest player in the vicinity. For a second there, I thought maybe he purposely did not catch that ball for an interception, but it's only third down. He should have reeled that one in if he could have, and he was trying. So it's fourth and 12, and obviously Versailles is going to go for it. Coldwater gives up nine and a half points per game. They give up less than 100 yards passing per game, and that's the situation we're looking at right now. Schmidt Meyer's in the backfield this time along with Wilker. Personal protector, it looks like, on this particular situation. Francis goes in motion. Only two down linemen for Coldwater. 
Roll out, Wilker looks, throws, and just tosses it out of bounds. And Dave, the Coldwater defense steps up and makes a play. Yeah, nicely done. A net gain is actually a loss of two on that possession by Versailles. Coldwater's going to take over on down. So in the early going, both defenses making their presence known. So Coldwater gets the football right back. They will get it this time on their 31-yard line. It's like Depwick was headed to the backfield this time, and he is. He will be on the right hip of Balaam Blackberger, and a couple receivers go each way. And no, fake the handoff. Blackberger looks, 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 guns it to the sidelines. Got a man open over here. Has to wait a long time for it to get here. That's Obringer, and Obringer will be brought down. Yeah, we had a great view of that one. Caden Obringer sitting over here in the flats. The Versailles zone defense kept dropping off of him, and actually it looked like Balin Blockberger looked at him and like, you're that wide open, and then he connected with him. That's good enough for a first down. An ultimate outdoor first down, our first one of the game from the 41-yard line. This is Mason Welch with that carry, and we got flags down. That's a good time to introduce our officiating crew. Our referee is Bill Hammett, umpire Brandon Strain, line judge Trey Green, linesman Jason Edler, back judge Zach Gossett, and our center judge David Houston. Gonna walk this one back. We'll take it back to the 31-yard line on that penalty, so it'll be first and 20. Six-man crew tonight in the Ohio High School football world you can go with five or six men crew uh, six tonight for this game this time he's got Depwig and Potcotter one to each side of them fakes fakes looks and Blockberger's got room to run gets a good block out here by number 74 on the edge that's Tyler Jones and good run by Blockberger yeah, great read by Jones there. We had a great view of it, Mark. Did a nice job of letting the defender turn so he didn't commit a penalty right there. And that picks up that penalty yardage, makes it second and eight. Our first down sponsor is Ultimate Outdoor. Bring resort-style living to your backyard every day with a luxury outdoor from Ultimate Outdoor. Picked up 12 that time, so we're looking at second and eight as we go trips to the left, single receiver right. There's a man in motion. This is Obringer. And Obringer gets the handoff. Jet sweep on the end. Obringer's in the clear. Look out. This is Caden Obringer. And he will. He's just he short. He's just short. I was looking to see if he got there. He did not. And I'm trying to pick up who ran him down. Unfortunately, I didn't get a number for sure, and I don't want to guess. But great effort by the Versailles defense to keep him out of the End zone. And we're in the Wapakoneta Ford red zone. That's a 56 yard run for the Cavaliers. A little jet sweep action. In the backfield now is Potcotter. He's deep in the eye. Potcotter gets the handoff and pushes his way into the end zone. Miles Potcotter. Now has 12 rushing touchdowns on the season. Nicely done off the left side of that offensive line. Both the jet sweep and then pot cutter going behind. Rudy Kremer at center, Max Cook, and Will Berry, the left side of that cold water offensive line paving the way. Our touchdown sponsor is Burke Petroleum, now offering propane for residential, farm, commercial, industrial users. Burke Petroleum, dependable, available at 800-776-3097. This is Bryce Cushow for the PAT attempt. Blockberger's the holder, and they come off the edge and about got there, but Cushow nails it, and it will be 7-0 Coldwater. They never marked it up, Dave. Did he miss that? It never went to the scoreboard. No, they haven't. So he must well, have been wide right. Sure looked good from here. Yes, anyway, well, the Cavaliers score first with 7.29 to go. We're going to take a break. You're watching high school football on WOSN.
We're back at Versailles. They did chalk up the PAT. We were right on. Yeah. We second guessed ourselves. We never do that as coaches. Took a little time to get it up on the scoreboard is all. Cusho will kick off to Versailles. And headed this way with the football and with a lot of room to run. Look out. Here comes number 12. That's Jace Watron. Great run back. Yes, sir. Gets a wall on the left side of that kick return team for Versailles. And you wanted to come back right after that touchdown by Coldwater and try and establish yourself. Well, they're going to get yeah, field, say, good field yep. position, except I see a yellow hanky at the 20. Let's see what the call is from referee Bill Hammett. As you can see, there is some PA difficulties here, and we could not understand Mr. Hammett. All we do know, it's a penalty that's going to take the football back a long way for the for Sales Tigers. So All the way to the 10-yard line. They'll start their second drive of the game here. Going to need to look to answer this score by Coldwater. If you want to compete in the fourth quarter, you got to go mano e mano against this Cavalier squad. Wilker in the shotgun. Francis fakes the handoff. Here's a quick pass out. Well defended by Aaron Kalp. Yes, does a real nice job there, this cop. Gets in front of the receiver to knock it away. Does not commit a penalty in any way, shape, or form. Good explosion to the football. We'll change a couple bodies as we go to second and 10. Wilker's also rushed for a couple touchdowns this year from his quarterback position. Man in motion is Francis. This is a pitch. Kanapke dives forward. Might have got a couple. Yeah, nice penetration there defensively by Sam Rissmiller. Gonna mark it down at about the 11 yard line, so only maybe a yard gain. That makes it third and 11. Correction, that was Owen Leifeld, Leifeld with the penetration. Owen Leifeld, number 54 and 55. I was off by one, Mark. I hope they forgive me. Schmidt Myers in the backfield again. A little protection for Wilker. Four man rush. Wilker snaps it out, it's caught. Tackled immediately on the far side of the field by Elander. I think that's going to be a bit short. Yeah, real nice timing pattern, but not deep enough to get to the sticks and move them. So the Versailles Tigers are going to need to punt this one away. Bolander, Dave mentioned a moment ago, is also the punter, and he averages about 34 yards per punt, this number 78. And Elander standing right at midfield. It's going to hit and take a bounce. It's going to take a good bounce for the Versailles Tigers. This is going to be a good punt. And it goes all the way to the 35-yard line. Well, Coldwater will have their third possession of the evening. Just under six minutes to go in our opening quarter. You mentioned, Mark, again, Coldwater. They come in offensively, 38 points per game. They only give up nine. And then Versailles, before these, these last three games, they were really putting some numbers up, but their offensive average has dropped to 19, and they give up 16 and a half. They were averaging 29 points a game a month ago, and it's down, dropped to 19. Depwick is on the right side. This will be Potcotter trying to get around the end. Versailles is there quickly in the front presence of James Schmidtmeyer. Yeah, Schmidtmeyer, good pursuit right there, coming off the left edge. Short gain for Coldwater, make it second down and eight. See, Depwick headed to the sideline. Ross Francis, he was in on the action on that one as well. So Potcotter will head to a wing back position along with three receivers to the left and Rockberger's alone in the backfield. Yeah, empty backfield. He will roll left, snap out, caught. That's complete. Mason Welsh again with the reception. 
Looking to see where they put that one down at. Looks like it'll be at about the 42 yard line. So they're gonna need three here on third down with the Cavaliers. Blockberg's gonna run himself. No, it's not, it's a, direct, it's a Welch that time on a direct snap. Yeah. And he's gonna be short. So another decision for Coach Otten and his Cavaliers. He went for it much deeper in his own territory on the first possession. I don't see why you would change things now. Fourth and short. Close to midfield, but on your side of the 50 at the 44. They need to get a yard here on fourth down. And Coach Chip Otten says, I'm going to go for this one too. Yeah, let's dance with what brought us. I want to challenge my guys. We didn't get it the first time. High formation. Pot cotters deep. Turn, handoff short. First man up. And Depwig will pile forward and get that first down. The ultimate outdoor first down. Goes right behind Rudy Kremer is center and Max Cook is left guard to move the chains. Just over the 47 yard line, official scoreboard says to the 48. Our scoreboard today is brought to you by Homan's Insurance, your trusted local insurance specialist, a member of the Wayne Insurance Group with two locations to serve you in Chickasaw and in Versailles. Man in motion, fake the handoff. Looks, looks, Blockberger. Going to loft it out. He's He's got Lelander out here. What a pass. Put yeah. it right between the zone and made a great completion to Elander. Yeah, it's like those two guys have played together yeah. for the last six, seven years, but they put it right in that crease between the zone coverage and Elander and Blockberger on the same page. Great completion and moves the ball down to the Versailles 30-yard line. That also will be an ultimate outdoor first down. Blockberger this time will have the third running back in that trio, Braxton Taylor behind him. And he is deep. Quick pitch, Braxton Taylor's got the edge. And he's gonna power inside the 25 yard line, does Taylor. Power, the right adjective right there, Mark. He was rumbling, bumbling, stumbling around that left side and running with a lot of purpose. Potcotter has 517 yards rushing on this evening season. Depwick has 155. Taylor has 307. Oh, yeah. They divide your, up the duty. Yeah. yeah. He's your third guy, Mark, at 307 yards. Very impressive. This time it's Potcotter to the right. Fake. Here's Blockberger's going to roll out. Got a man open in the middle. He found Depwig. Depwig will power inside the 10 yard line. He gets inside. The red zone, our road, red zone sponsor tonight is Wapak Kaneta Ford. Going to be down right at the nine yard line. So first and goal from the nine for the Coldwater Cavaliers. Looking to get this to a two score contest here in the first quarter. Just inside of the 10 yard line. So it's first and goal and at about the nine, Potcotter. We'll set up on the right side of Blockberger as we go two receivers each way. Blockberger looks, will roll to his right and look. Now he's going to run for the end zone. Bach, did he get in? I'm looking for a signal. And he must be just either. short yep. because. Well, no, I nope, think now they they're celebrating. It. I, yep. Boy, that guy never raised his hands, did he? I, well, maybe he did. Yeah. He might only be four foot eight down there. We've got the Versailles student section well, in our. The official on the way. other side didn't make no, a call. No, he did not. He did not. So Blockberger has a rushing touchdown. Our touchdown sponsor this evening is Burke Petroleum. And our kicker is Bryce Couchot. The holder is Balin Blockberger. And the long snapper is Bennett Spriggs. Kicks up, and that one sails through. This time we get the signal. Very clear. And Coldwater will go up by 14 with 149 to go in the first. You're watching high school football on WOSN. Our timeout sponsor tonight is Lee's Famous Recipe Chicken in Lima, Wapak, Delphus, and St. Mary's. Call Lee's while your catering needs. Lee's famous recipe chicken where home style happens here. Coldwater, a pair of rushing touchdowns, one by 
Potcotter, one by Blockberger, and they have taken a 14-0 lead with 1.49 to go in our opening quarter. Here's Cushot to kick off again and sends it down. This time he puts it close to the end zone. It's tracked down by Drake Arns. And Arns finds a way to get over the 20 after it looks like he was going to go down inside the 15. So pretty good run back with not much uh, blocking ahead of him. Yeah, does a nice job. Brings it to the middle of the field. And Versailles is going to take over on their own 22. Imperative right here that Versailles puts a drive together. They don't necessarily need to score, but again, the last three weeks and now going into uh, this first quarter, it's just been very challenging for them to find anything consistently on offense. Schmidtmeyer will be in the backfield with Ethan Wilker. And Cavaliers, did they jump? I think they did. And maybe that'll be a little bit of a spark that helps Versailles get things moving in the right direction. Going to make it first and five. That's good medicine if you're a Versailles Tigers fan. Just, again, it opens up the playbook. See, see, what you, yeah, see what you can go with here as they signal in the plays. Everybody take a look at the sideline to get the play call. Schmidtmeyer will be on the right hip of Eli, uh, Wilker. And he will run himself this time and not this time. Right there to make the big hit is number 40, 54, Sam Rissmiller. Yeah, Riss Miller having a great season as a junior on this cold water ball club. You talk about small school football, and I always look at how many seniors each roster has and how many players go both ways. Coldwater has 17 seniors in starting positions, and they have five two-way players. Versailles, 14 seniors in starting positions with seven going both ways. Wilker again. In the shotgun, looks over to the coach, see what we're going to get this time. Fakes, handoff, pass, caught on this side of the field by Arms, but he goes down immediately in the arms of Max Ross. Nice job by Ross. And on that offensive side of the ball, number 18, Chase Mana, just really upset with himself. It was his job to get the block there on Ross, was unable to do so, and the Coldwater defense are playing hungry. They really are. Versailles has to run one more play here in the quarter. Play clock's at 19. So Versailles started this on the 27th thanks to the penalty. Now they're back to their own 24-yard line. And they're coming after him and got him. Barry gets yes, another TFL tackle for loss. The sack. Will Barry, the 6'4, 225 pound senior. That's going to bring our quarter to a close, but Versailles deep in their own territory. His 12th TFL of the year will, for Will Barry. Puts the ball all the way back to the nine yard line, and that's where we'll be when we start quarter number two. You're watching high school football, WOSN. Back at H.P. Holefield in Versailles, our presenting sponsor is the People's Bank. We are investing in the communities we serve, your bank, your way. And our quarter sponsor for quarter number two is Rural First. They're brought to you by Rural First is quarter number two, a leader in rural lending. Rural First can help you live closer to what matters. Versailles has to punt it away, Mark. We found out before the game an interesting tidbit. The first game for Coldwater High School varsity football was right here on this field in 1936. Yeah, they've played here a couple times yeah. since, and if that first quarter is any indication, they're, they're pretty comfortable. Well, they're trying to get the scoreboard clock straightened around. We've had some issues with that this evening, and now it goes to 12 minutes for quarter number two. And it is punt time for Leland Boland. Good punt the first time. That one mm. went off the side of his foot. Not what you want to have happen right now because Versailles has already asked so much of their defense in the first quarter and in the last three games. Now they're going to go there again. And uh, 
it's going to be a tough challenge. Don't you think that I, I, uh, Owen Kunk also kicks for uh, for the Coldwater Cavaliers, mm -hmm. so you got a couple of linemen. Yeah. You do all that banging and beating and running into people the whole game, and then you're expected to do a, a, a finesse thing like, exactly. like punt the football. Yeah. I, I think it, that's a hard thing to do. Mm -hmm. See where the football ends up. Uh, way back on the 15-yard line. So already leading by two scores. Coldwater's in a great spot. Handoff. Taylor. Braxton Taylor finds a hole on the right side and gets down to about the 10. Great tackle by James Schmidt Meyer, Meyer again. Just does a great job of pursuing the football. Coldwater begins this possession in the red zone. Our red zone sponsor tonight is Wapakoneta Ford. Forward. Yeah, James Schmidt-Meyer. <laughs> I'm, I'm a, like I say, I'm a Chevy guy, but he is built Ford tough out there for these for sale Tigers. About the 11-yard line. Handoff, Potcotter just moves the pile forward. Yeah, moves the pile forward. How would you like to be an offensive lineman in a program where the head coach says, we're going to run the ball behind you guys, get it done, and you accept that challenge, and that's what we're seeing. Did you ever know an offensive lineman who would rather <laughs> – Run yeah. block, then yeah. pass block. Come no. on, I get to attack when we run exactly. block, and I got to defend when we pass block. Yes. Let me go after those guys and knock them down. Now, they all want to have the football in their hands. You well, know, yeah, but, that's true. <laughs> but in this situation, when you've got a depth wig and a pot cutter and a tailor behind you, you're happy to really get after the defense. Need a couple yards for a first down. Pot cutter pushed the pile forward. Did he get to the first down sticks? It says no. Now, here's a decision. You got a great field goal kicker. Or do you go for it here on fourth and one? I think Coach Otten has shown tonight already that the philosophy is to go for it. He's done it twice in his own territory. I don't think he's going to change philosophies here. Now, the other piece of this, though, is you want your field goal kicker to get some work when it matters, but they're going to go for it. Versailles stopped him once on fourth down and... It's the hold up here. The play clock never started. So it is just now started. So you have plenty of time to think about this one. Potcotter's deep. Here's the pitch to Potcotter. He ran through a tackle. And did he get to the end zone? He did. How about that? He ran right through the tackle. Ross and, Francis. Uh, yes. Uh, yeah, mm -hmm. right through the tackle into the end zone. Six-yard touchdown run for Potcotter. His second touchdown run of the evening. Yeah, great defense. I mean, the penetration they got through the line, just better offense and better offense in the form of number 24, Miles Potcutter. Our touchdown sponsor tonight is Burke Petroleum, now offering propane for residential, farm, commercial, and industrial users. Burke Petroleum, dependable, available, 800-776-3097. Here's Cushot for his third effort of the evening. And he slams that one through. 9.40 to go, second quarter. Coldwater, 21, for sales nothing. Watching high school football, WOSN. Our scoreboard event is brought to you by Homer's Insurance, your trusted local insurance specialist, a member of the Wayne Insurance Group. Two locations to serve you in Chickasaw and in Versailles. Our scoreboard shows the orange and black from Coldwater up 21 to nothing here in the second quarter. It's about, ball's popped up towards the sideline where it's going to be bounced around and forced to be picked up. And Versailles is going to start inside their 20-yard line. So Coldwater, they... Score there on four plays, and in the first half thus far, they've had their first drive stopped on downs, but they have had TD, TD, and TD since. And the ball goes to the 19-yard line for Versailles, as this will be a possession that needs to put some, some points, and maybe if it, not just points, but, but some time off the clock, and the way it, this uh, efficient offense is run for Coldwater. Yes, and... 
And I see a lot of good things out here with this Versailles offense. They have athletes in the right positions. It's just this Coldwater Cavalier defense. We talked about playing in the now in the pregame. They have done that. The handoff up over the 20. Depwick was on the tackle. I believe that was Landon Kanapke, number 28, so. mm -hmm. on the carry. They pick up three on the game or on the run. Second and seven. Cody Depwig was defensive player of the year last year in the MAC, and I haven't seen anything to make it any different this exactly, year. Exactly. <laughs> yes. Fakes a handoff. Does Wilker snap throw over the middle? It's caught by Watcher, and that's going to be a first down. Brought to you by Ultimate Outdoor. Bring resort style living to your backyard every day with luxury outdoor space by Ultimate Outdoor. That is a gr great uh, throw and catch right there. Jace Watron had to have some mental toughness coming across the middle. Had to extend his arms to reel that one in. You see on that play a lot of times a receiver, all of a sudden he has alligator arms, not Watron right there. Reels it in, and as you said, it's a Versailles first down. 15-yard pickup to the 37. Watron's the leading receiver this year. Here's Wilker, uh, throws it, but he throws it right into the arms of Potcotter. Potcotter fakes a man out, and it's a pick six for Miles Potcotter. Miles Potcutter steps in front of the intended receiver, Drake Arns, picks that one off. Johnny on the spot, takes it back to pay dirt. And boy, Coldwater, they're looking to run away and hide. That pushes it to 27 with 8.09 to go here in the second. On that pick six by Miles Potcutter, he scored two rushing touchdowns and now one on an interception. And Cusho will be in to kick again. Touchdown sponsor tonight is Burke Petroleum. Here's Cusho. A little bit of a high snap, but they get it down, and he put that one through. So with 8.09 to go here in quarter number two, it's Coldwater 28, and for sales nothing. You're watching high school football on WOSN. Our timeout sponsor tonight is Lee's, famous recipe chicken in Lima, Wapak, Delphus, and in St. Mary's. Call Lee's for all your catering needs. Lee's, famous recipe chicken where home style happens here. Cusho to kick off. And that one's going to be line drive down the field where it's eventually picked up. And the football gets up over the 30-yard line. Good run back. I'm looking for a number, Dave. Is that number 16, I believe, yes. it is Drake Arns? And Jake Kesson on the tackle for Coldwater. 42-yard pick six for Miles Potcutter. <laughs> Arns can't find anybody to hand the football to. <laughs> Got two officials. Oh, there's a flag on the far side of the field. That's why. Okay. <laughs> he, he said, I might as well take the ball home with me. <laughs> so the three wise men, you can join Danny Holbrook, Miles Holiday, and Nate Garlock each week as they discuss local football matchups, Buckeye football, and sports across the state of Ohio in WSN's newest podcast, The Three Wise Men. Yeah, if you're into high school sports, you want to get on that podcast, listen to it. This past week they had oh, yeah. Coach um, Schaefer and Trenton Barraza from Columbus Grove. Great interview with them. That football goes all the way to midfield with the penalty that occurred on Coldwater. So the best starting field position, well, not exactly, because Versailles actually started on the Coldwater 29 one time. And they went four and out, but now they get the football at midfield. Both teams show the good old eye formation. I love it. Turn, handoff. Whoa. Will Berry. Uh, I think Will Berry was in the backfield, don't you? <laughs> yes, Will Berry lost a yard as he came off that left defensive end side. Look at Will Berry and he goes 6'4", 225, and he is every bit of that. Landon Kanapke, the sophomore, a sophomore running back in the Midwest Athletic Conference, 
you have earned. Well, Landon <laughs> Kanapke goes 175, yeah. so he's given up about 50 pounds and mm -hmm. a bit of height as well. Barry switches to the other side of the defense this time. And here they come, coming up the middle after him. Wilkins got a man out here. What nice a catch. Job. Oh, my goodness, what a catch. Tyler Bargey made a great break on the football and made the completion. I think we call that back shoulder fade, Dave. Back shoulder fade, great read again, both on the same page. 26-yard pickup, and that gives Versailles an ultimate outdoor first down. Aaron Kopp on the defense did a nice job, just better offense right there. Versailles deep in cold water territory right now at the 25. It's a 26-yard pickup and a first down. Ross Francis is in the backfield now along with Ethan Wilker. Wilker's going to throw it to the end zone. He's got arms got out him. there. Did he catch it? He did. He laid it out there, and Arns went and got it. Arns, who did not have a touchdown catch before this evening, just got his first one of the night. If you can't go through them, go over them. That's what Versailles does on back-to-back -back pass plays, and they're on the board with 7.05 to go in our second quarter. Drake Arns makes that catch on the TD pass. Wilker has now thrown six touchdown passes on the season. Their PAT guy, as we talked about earlier, is Bolin. The holder is Chase Monin. Low snap, gets it down, kicks up, and it is good. Versailles is on the board. It's 28-7, Coldwater. You're watching High School Football on WOSN. Versailles Tigers dent the scoreboard. Our scoreboard sponsor tonight is Homeland's Insurance, your trusted local insurance specialist, a member of the Wayne Insurance Group with two locations to serve you in Chickasaw and in Versailles. 50 yards, Dave, how many plays? It took three plays, I covered those 50 yards and a 25 yard pass play from Wilker to Arns. Just what Coach Jones needed his team's team to do here in the second quarter. Leland Bowl, Bowl had just hammered one and going back to the end zone to get it was Ethan Elander. That is such a weapon. We've seen Bryce Cruchot do that a lot this year. Now Bolander, when you put the ball in the end zone and make your opponent go 20, uh, from the 20, go 80 yards to do something, that, that's always a benefit. And that's what you want to sell your defense on. We're going to put it deep, and gentlemen, it's your job to stop them, make them understand they're not going to be able to cover 80 yards. Yeah, touchdown pass, put a little life in the step sure on the sideline mm -hmm. over here for Versailles. See how Coldwater responds. Ryan Jones in his sixth year at Versailles, 50 and 21 at Versailles, and again last year, state runner up for the Versailles Tigers. They fell the clock just now started. Yeah. I don't know whether that's a, a error on the uh, the operator or whether, you know, those are done by uh, Wi-Fi. Maybe that's a bit of an issue tonight. Blockburger's got to roll out, couldn't find his initial man and lost it over to the sideline. Real heady play by Blockburger right there. Nobody open. Doesn't try to make something out of nothing. You turn the ball over down here to Vers Versailles, and they put it in for a score before halftime, and good old Mr. Momentum's yeah. going to be on the other side of the table if you're a Coldwater Cavalier. Dave, I, have you seen Blockburger play basketball? I have. Oh, my goodness. Yes. He, he's as talented a quarterback he is. He is He is a really good high school basketball he player, is. too. Mm -hmm. It is second and ten now. Looks like uh, he's got – Depwig to his left and Potcotter to his right. He rides Potcotter and keeps it himself. Blockberger's got a running first down. Did he get there? He did not. Yes, he oh, did. Oh, he's still going. He's still going. He got up over the 30. I thought they had him, Dave, and I was set to mark in my book. He, he was down. Yeah, he moved the chains. And that he did. He picks up a first down. It's brought to you by Ultimate Outdoor. Couple of spin cycles in there amongst the run. He Some needed. hands on the leg, but not enough to bring him down until he moves the sticks. He needed to get to the 30 and did just exactly that. A couple of receivers to his left. Fake. Look. And looks. And looks. And he's going to go down. They got him in the backfield. I think the first guy to him 
was number 81, and that's Luke Kaiser. And again, the, the medicine for Versailles has been that touchdown. A lot of pep in the step for this Versailles Tiger defense right now. On a passing down, Schmidtmeyer comes to the sideline and bringing an extra DB in. Football's on the 26-yard line. They need to get to the 40 for a first down. They'll go trips to the left this time. And Depwick will be on the right hip of Blackberger. He looks, looks, swings it out to Depwick. And Cody will be brought down short of the first down. Nicely done out there in the flat. Trying to pick up the number. I think that is number 28. Maybe it's 29, Ross Francis. Yeah, some of these. It's Francis. Yeah, yeah, the numbers sort of curl up underneath their shoulder pads a little bit. Makes 29. it difficult to read. But, yeah, nice job. Good discipline football by Ross Francis. Third down from the 29. Again, they need to get to the 40, so they need 11. Blockberger will look. Throws it. Out pattern, caught on the far side of the field. Brady Lefeld. Again. No, not Brady Lefeld, Caden Obringer. That's a yeah. six, not an eight. Yep, Caden Obringer spreading it around. Just Blockberger, again, that senior leader, the quarterback, doing what he needs to do to manage the football game here. As Versailles, again, as we said, light on their toes after that touchdown. Coldwater trying to squelch. That enthusiasm 13, on Versailles 13 side. 13-yard pickup gives him a first down and ultimate outdoor first down. Blackberger looks over the middle, snaps it up to Welch. Welch with a great catch, and he moves the ball also for a first down, this time to the 40 of Versailles, and Coldwater's in a, in a hurry now. Right to the line of scrimmage they go. They got Versailles on their heels. They want to make it happen now. This is Welch. Welch tripped up in the backfield. On the play by Francis. Yes, Ross Francis again shoots the gap, gets Welsh in the backfield. See that Wildcat offense? I didn't see that when I had Coldwater against Minster back in week five. Lost a, down, a yard on that first down play. Blockberger's on the sideline getting some instructions from his coach about what play comes up next as we're under five minutes to go before the band show. This will be the eighth play of this drive that began back on their own 20-yard line. Elander goes in motion. He's got the ball. And he's got the football. And did he get inside the 40 before they get him? I think so. So he picked up a couple. Yeah, going to make it third and nine. To the 39-yard line. Got tackled by Kaiser. Whatever the first half he's having. Gonna put the football down actually at the 38. Yes, gauge. they are. Mm -hmm. So they need to get about eight here on this down or on fourth down, as we've seen Coach Otten go for it a couple times this evening. Yeah, I would say you pick up some positive yardage, it'll make you think about going fourth on a fourth, but I think they're going regardless. Bachberger's got a man open. It's Welch over the middle of the field. He's finally brought down by Eli Kaiser. Great again. What a pass. Yeah. Down the middle of the field, over the defense, Welsh makes himself available, and that's a big gain, and Coldwater looking to put points on here before halftime. Into the red zone, the Wapakoneta Ford red, red zone. <laughs> 25-yard pickup to the 13-yard line. And what do we have? I think we're going to get a... Lee's Famous Recipe Chicken timeout. We'll take a timeout too. We're watching high school football, WOSN. Our initial timeout of the football game, called by Coldwater. Lee's Famous Recipe Chicken in Lima, Wapak, Delphus, and St. Mary's is our timeout sponsor. Call Lee's for all your catering needs. Lee's Famous Recipe Chicken, where home style happens here. Coach Otten takes that time out. The Coldwater Cavaliers circle the wagons to talk about how they want to execute this last 326. Versailles do, doing the same defensively. Here we go. Depwig is ahead of Potcotter in the I formation. Handoff, Potcotter. And he got uh, inside the 10. 
Going behind that left side of the line. Kremer at center. Cook and Barry at guard and tackle, respectively. <laughs> I've watched Coldwater in the past, and again, when they find something that works and that left side of the offensive line typically works, they just continually pound you. It's like a sledgehammer. Just keep coming at you and wearing you down. Football's at the nine-yard line. They can get a first down without scoring a touchdown here as they're in the Wapakana Ford red zone. Pass over the middle. It's caught. That's a touchdown pass. And I'm looking to catch. Is that Obringer? I do believe it's Kate Obringer. It Kate Obringer. Touchdown pass to Obringer on play number 11 of this drive. Nine-yard TD pass. Block Berger to Obringer. Pushes the score up to 34-7 to in favor of the Cavaliers. Looking down here for whatever reason, there's a whole bunch of smoke just yeah. came out of the student section. Maybe it's because it, it, Blockberg is really hot. <laughs> yeah, because he is throwing the ball well tonight. The only problem is it's the Versailles student oh, yeah. section. Here's Cushot's kick. Once again, he scores, and that makes it 35-7 Cavaliers. Back in a moment, you're watching High School Football WOSN. We're back at HB Whole Field in Versailles. Our touchdown sponsor tonight is Brook Petroleum, now offering propane for residential, farm, commercial, industrial users. Brook Petroleum, dependable and available. That's 800 776 3097. Mark Coldwater has definitely put their stamp on this first half. They've scored on every possession except the very first one where they turned it over on downs. The number two ranked team in Division Six behind Kirtland. They didn't look ahead at all tonight, that's Absolutely for sure. Not. Big game coming up next week with Marion Local. Flyers have a big test tonight with Versailles, or with uh, Minster. Good run back. He's got blockers. A really good run back. Look out. This is number 16, Arns. Drake fumbled the football. That far official, he's oh going to say, he I did. thought maybe the ground caused it, but. That official on the far side was able to see the ball pop out before well, you Arns hit see the ground, Arns and he's hurt. Out. Yeah, he's holding his right arm. He was holding the football, and somebody put a hat right on that elbow of his and caused him to drop the football. And that is not a good sign for Drake, and we certainly hope he is healthy enough to come back, if not tonight, before this season comes to an end. And here's the Cavalier team with the football again, this time with 2.32 to go before half, and they're going to get the football on the plus side of the field at the 46. So now you look to execute your two-minute offense if you're cold water. Blockberger fakes handoff, snap pass, and he missed his man over the middle. Uh, that's Caleb Schreyer. That one falls incomplete. And we'll go to second down. Schreyer's upset with himself on that one. He knows he should have reeled that one in. He hasn't been a target tonight very often, if at all, but that one was definitely right there for him to make the catch. Caleb Schreyer had 13 catches for 201 yards and three touchdowns before this evening. We'll go to second and 10. Blockberger will fake a handoff again, and he's going to run himself. No, yep. he's going to find a receiver on the side of the field, and that's Obringer. He had the option to either run it or pass it because there was a lot of green pasture in front of him, but he goes to Obringer, and that's going to move the chains for another cold water first down. An ultimate outdoor first down. Room resort style living in your backyard every day with luxury outdoor space from Ultimate Outdoor. From the 34-yard line at 12, after that 12-yard pickup, and that will fall incomplete. That was intended for Caleb Schreyer again. And, yeah, he's got hanging his head a little bit. He needs some teammates to come up and grab him and say, you're okay, buddy. 6'1 junior is Caleb Schreyer. Goes 170. The football goes back to the hash mark on the far side of the field, 34-yard line. Still 158 to go. The Cavaliers have a single timeout remaining. Next play, two words in the game of football that are so vital. Next play, got to move on. Tepwig is in the backfield along with Blockberger. Blockberger snaps it over the middle, it's caught. 
Diving catch by Welch. Blockberger goes with a little Patrick Mahomes there with a little sidearm throw, zipping it in there to Welsh. Picked up four, makes it third and six from the 30-yard line. Exactly 100 seconds to go before halftime. Again, this is a film study drive for Coldwater, looking to score before halftime. Blockberger snaps it out to Welch. Just stopped right in the middle of the pattern, just realized he was open. He did get the first down, so that's going to stop the clock. 118 remaining in quarter number two. Coldwater only has one timeout left. That makes this a little more challenging. It's a handoff. Good play in the backfield that time. Looking to see that was Francis made yeah, that tackle. Yeah, Ross Francis again. He's really been able to shoot the gap on the right side of that Versailles defense. It's a no gain. Blockberger alone in the backfield this time, and we'll get a Versailles timeout. 54.1 to go. That's Versailles' first Lee's Famous Recipe Chicken timeout of half number one. And that's a great timeout by Coach Jones. Uh, we saw Francis make that tackle, and then he was sort of slow getting up and then basically turned around, and the ball was getting ready to be snapped again. Time to have that Versailles defense regroup a little bit here, you know, Bow their back a little bit and try and keep Coldwater from scoring here before halftime. Football is on about the 24-yard line. We talked about Coach Jones, Mark, and, and his history at Versailles. Well, Coach Otten, he's got a history at Coldwater, if you didn't know that. Uh -huh. 41 years coaching, 23 at Coldwater, 15th year as a head coach. 175 and 30 at Versailles. Career win 200 versus St. John's. Tradition. Also broke John Reed's record for most wins yes. by a Cavalier coach mm -hmm. this year. Yep. It will be second down at about 10. As you see, Miles Potcotter in the backfield along with Braylon Blockberger. And that's snapped over the middle. It's caught over the middle with an immediate tackle by Francis. Welch has become kind of the go-to guy on this plat pet this drive and our umpire Brandon Strain does a nice job of getting out of the way on that one we have a timeout Coldwater's going to take their last one we do our final Lee's famous recipe chicken timeout here of our opening half for them you can stream the WSN channel anytime anywhere for only eight dollars per month download from Roku or Apple TV or sign up at app.wsn.tv I'm talking about tradition and tradition of both of these programs Mark Coldwater, state, seven state championships, seven runner-ups, 19 MAC titles, number one in the league in that category. Versailles, they've got eight state championships, one MAC championship, and again, they fell to Kirkland last yep. year in the championship game in Division Five. I believe, and I've got to look this up because Marion Local was not on my roster of games to look up this week. I think they have 16 league championships trying to catch the Coldwater Cavaliers, of course, setting up that big matchup next week with 46 seconds to go here in the opening half. Cavaliers up 35-7 and trying to shove this to a running clock before halftime. Bachberger will be alone in the backfield this time. Two receivers go each way. He's got Welch in the slot, too. Blockberger looks. He's going to run himself right up the middle. Plenty of room for Blockberger. Balin skips into the end zone. Balin Blockberger has now rushed for three touchdowns this year. Actually, four because he had one earlier tonight. He gave a look at his receivers, and then he just saw everything open up. It was like the Red Sea parted, and he danced into the end zone from the 17-yard line for another Coldwater TD. Burke Petroleum is our touchdown sponsor this evening. Cusho is on for the PAT attempt. As that took just under two minutes to score that touchdown. It had to go just 46 yards. Cusho, a little low snap. Blockberg gets it down. Cavaliers now up 42-7. And we still have 39.6 to go before halftime. Our second quarter sponsor tonight has been Rural First, the leader in rural lending. Rural First can help you live closer to what matters. And our presenting sponsor tonight has been the People's Bank. 
We are invested in communities. We serve your bank your way. That's the People's Bank. If you're for sales right now, Mark, you're just looking. Let's see if we can get something back on this kick return and see where we end up with the football. If we can get close to midfield or on uh, cold water side of the 50, we'll look to do something with it. Otherwise, it might be time to take a knee, get into halftime, and really uh, discuss what adjustments we can make to be competitive coming out in the third quarter. Cusho will kick off. That one he puts the foot into down around the five yard line. He's gathered in. This is Watron. And Watron's got some room to run. He eventually is going to get tracked down by Braxton Taylor. Yeah, it's a catch 22 if you're Versailles. They've had some really nice run backs on kickoff returns. The problem is, is that they've had several kickoff returns in here the first half. Football is going to go down right about the 31 yard line with 31.1 to go. You know, interestingly, because I couldn't remember a, a timeout, a second timeout by Coldwater. They put one back on the board. Originally okay. Originally said none, and I think that was an error. Versailles still has two timeouts left. We, yeah, we stand corrected. And here, this is pass out to Watron. He's been his leading receiver on the course of the season. It goes out of bounds, though on the tackle by Aaron Kalp. Yeah, does a nice job. That's enough to move the sticks for Versailles. And Watron gets out of bounds to stop the clock. Obviously, moving the sticks would have as well. But right there, you want to look to get out of bounds. Does a nice job. Ultimate outdoor first down. Two receivers go each way. Wilkin snaps it over the middle. It's caught. This is Watron again. And he will go down in the arms of Mason Welsh, but not before he's picked up another ultimate outdoor first down. Coldwater giving up the play in front of them. The secondary very deep. And with 18.7, Versailles is going to take Versailles another timeout take a again. Timeout that they are at Lee's famous recipe chicken timeout. A lot of volleyball for you and I next week, Dave. Looking forward to it. some of these MAC schools, plus the crush you from the Champions mm -hmm. of the Northwest Conference. Yep. We will be in Van Wert on Monday night for a doubleheader. That would be Crestview and Marion Local and St. Henry and uh, Coldwater. Mm -hmm. Our matchups will yeah. be Marion Local, Coldwater, St. Henry, Crestview on Monday evening. We'll have it on WOSN. Looking forward to it. And those will air on Tuesday night. Then we'll be back in Van Wert on Wednesday night when those games for the championship match in the district uh, that this particular week on Wednesday, and that will be uh, aired on Thursday night then on WOSN. Yeah, uh, all respect to New Bremen as they are in the Wapak district. That Van Wert district, it is a juggernaut with those four teams, all for, state ranked. For Stale, still has a timeout left with 18.7, and they are on the 46-yard line. Wilkin throws it out on the side. It's caught by Francis, and they're going to say no. He dropped it as he went out of bounds. So that will be an incomplete. You know, Wilker's got a pretty good arm, Dave. He does. You he know, does. When he's got time, he's got a couple good receivers in Francis and in Watron, and you know, he snapped that ball. To, but that was in the air a long way. A pretty good snap to the ball, 12.8 to go in the quarter. Yeah, whenever you're throwing from the middle of the field to the – or between the middle of the field and the far hash to the near sideline, you got to have some some – uh, muscle in that arm in order to get it where you want it to go. Wilkin to th set up in the shotgun again. Schmidtmeyer's beside him. Here comes the Cavaliers. Little screen, jailbreak screen to Watron. He's got a first down and more. He's going to go down with 4.6 to go as he picks up a first down, and Versailles will take their final timeout. I had an interesting conversation with a coach uh, about two weeks ago. The MAC has only one artificial turf field. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Okay. And, and that artificial turf field is has dual purpose. Exactly. In Delphus. Yes. Right? Mm -hmm. On these fields, grass fields, you still have to throw from the middle of the field downhill to the sideline because, because of the crown. they're crowned mm -hmm. to drain. Yep. 
And uh, when you have the flat fields on the, the uh, artificial turf, there's a very slight crown to it, nothing like what you have no, not on the at grass all. field. Mm -hmm. So it's kind of, I thought that was kind of an interesting thing. He said there have been fields where you guys got to gun the ball downward to, to make a completion on the sideline here in some of these grass fields. Oh, yeah. And, Mark, you know, being down on the sideline on a grass field sometimes with a good crown, you can be on the sideline on one side and not That's see it. below <laughs> the guy's knees That's on right. the other side. That is correct. 4.6 to go. Versailles got a shot to get the ball in the end zone. They have I, used their final timeout. I know turf is something that's uh, in vogue, but I'm a grass guy. Uh, thank you very much. Well, Watron going to step right out of bounds, and he does so with .7 to go. So Looks like they might try a field goal. Working it downfield. Pretty good two-minute drill. On that completion. And the kicker is Leland Bolin. We know he's got a leg. He's put it into the end zone on kickoffs. He is going to line it up. He's going to be right on his own 34-yard line, which will make it a 44-yard attempt. He has been three for four on the season coming into tonight. The holder is Chase Monin. And from the 34-yard line, makes it a 44-yard attempt. The kick, it's up, and it's going to be off to the left. That will bring our opening half to a close. Coldwater 42 for sale 7. You're watching High School Football on WOSN. We're back at Whole Field here in Versailles. Our presenting sponsor for the third quarter is People Bank. We are invested in communities we serve. Your bank, your way. And also, our third quarter sponsor tonight is Rural First, the leader in rural lending. Rural First can help you live closer to what matters. Mark Shine, Dave Bowen. Well, Dave, we are going to start quarter number three with a running clock thanks to a cold water offense that scored every possession but their first, correct? You're exactly right. That halftime for the cold water offense, the coaches had to be talking about them, about staying crisp because they had an outstanding standing first half. The only blemish, that first drive where they turned it over on downs in their own territory due to a stingy Versailles defense, but they scored on six of their seven possessions. Versailles, on the other hand, one for seven in drives in the first half. They had one drive stopped on downs, two punts, one interception that turned into a pick six, uh, one fumble, and then they did score the one touchdown. And then, again, great execution at the end of the half. They had an opportunity to try a field goal. Did not go for them. But I liked their their tenacity, their effort, their grit in order to put themselves in position to make that attempt. Well, and you talked about turnovers, a pick six and a fumble that turned into a touchdown. And that's contributed to this 42-7 lead as Coldwater kicks off to start the second half. Once again, pretty good kickoff return. That was Francis, and they will get the football at about the 26, 27-yard line. Let's see where it ends up being placed down. Call it the 27, I think. It's good enough for me. Mm -hmm. And that's where Versailles and quarterback Ethan Wilker will take over. Let's see what they come out of the half thinking about here. It's a big drive for Versailles. Again, not, not that maybe you're going to come back and win this game, but just establishing who you are, uh, trying to compete as, as well as you can. Walker will turn, hand off. Schmidtmeyer will go over the 30 or right in that general vicinity. That's his first carry, I think. He's I some, do too, yeah. He's blocking I back this evening. Boy, must have must have went down early because they set it back on about the 28-yard line. He must have went down before I saw it go down. Of course, they're a little bit closer in viewpoint than we are up here yeah, with all exactly. the bodies around. Mm -hmm. Of course, Coldwater looking for that big matchup next week with Marion Local. Flyers were up at half on Minster, but in a good football game. Here's Wilker again. And he's being chased in the background, backfield, and he's going to loft it just out of bounds. Right in his face that time for the Cavaliers was Owen Lefeld, and that ball was wisely thrown out of bounds. Yeah, Owen Lefeld jumped through there, and all of a sudden, Mr. Wilker was thinking, where am I going to go with this? And he does throw it out of bounds, negates a negative play in any way, shape, or form. So a small solace, but again, you've got a manageable third and eight here for Versailles. Again, 
really need to see them convert this just because you've spent the half talking about your adjustments. You want to put them into play. Wilker, shotgun. They come off the edge. Wilker's going to roll to his right, throw back screen pan. Oh, he no. threw it right into the hands of Owen Kunk. And Owen Kunk skates into the end zone. That's 6'7", 205-pound body, and he is a happy young man. You want to take a picture of disciplined football right there. Owen Kunk, not fooled by the misdirection of the play, stays home and is rewarded with it, or for it, I should say, as he scampers, what, 30 yards for a touchdown. Our touchdown 29. sponsor tonight is Burke Petroleum, now offering propane for residential, farm, commercial, and industrial users. Burke Petroleum, dependable, available at 800-776-3097. Here's Cusho to kick the extra point. He does so, and the Cavaliers come right out of the shoot and tack on seven more. It's 49-7, Coldwater. You're watching high school football on WOSN. Our scoreboard today is brought to you by Homer's Insurance, your trusted local insurance specialist. Remember the Wade Insurance Group with two locations to serve you in Chickasaw and in for sales. Pick six, Owen Kunk puts his team up 49-7 as Cusho goes back to kick off again. So with the running clock, the only time the clock will stop is after a touchdown because it's a change of possession, a turnover, and a timeout. In fact, it has started already once the official signals that kickoff man can do his job. The clock starts before it even gets touched. And we're going to get a return back up near the 30. You know, Dave, we're on the sideline here. I think here. we had a fumble. Oh, they're going to call it down. Okay. We're on the sideline here, and it's, it's a very tight area, so it's hard to see the Versailles players on the sideline. But I've been looking for number 16, Drake Arns, because he went down with what appeared to be a, a shoulder or an arm injury, and I can't find him over here. Now, he may be here, but I just can't find him in the number of bodies that are in front of us as close to the scoreboard as it is. We certainly hope that that young man was not having a serious injury. Absolutely. Wish him the best. But, no, I have not noticed him on the sideline either. What I have noticed, I know it's 49-7, to but the nonverbals for this Versailles squad – Nothing but positive, just looking to keep digging. Trip right. Ball's on the 30. Here's Wilker with a run, and he's got plenty. Look out, Wilker's in the, row, in the wide open area, and he will be tracked down by Carson Holman, or he's in the end zone. We've got a flag late to go on top of that. I think it's going to be a face mask on Holman. Great effort to get to Wilker, but he put his hand on the face mask and pulled Wilker down. It's going to be additional yardage at the end of the play. That'll be a first down. Our first down sponsor tonight is Ultimate Outdoor. Bring resort-style living to your backyard every day with a luxury outdoor space by Ultimate Outdoor. You know, Wilker had 45 yards rushing before tonight. He about picked up 45 more right there. Mm -hmm. Again, not expected to run. So, again, breaks a tendency right there and picks up great yardage. And Versailles hustles up to the line of scrimmage. Francis to the left of Wilker. Going to take a look at Coach. Still 20 seconds on the play clock. Come the Cavaliers, and they're in the backfield. Number 23, Derek Dews is there in a hurry. Yeah, shot the gap, did Dews, and makes that a tackle for loss. Going to make it second down and 13. Back to the 23-yard line for the Versailles Tigers on that very quick reaction to the play. You can see looking over the coach on the sidelines at this play call. Wilker and Francis will go back in the backfield. And again, Francis will be to the left of Ethan Wilker. Trying to get him to jump, and nobody did. Here's the play call. Yeah, Coldwater showing blitz again. Better hurry. Mm -hmm. And they just did get it off. Wilker looks to the end zone, lofts it up, and it is just over the head of his intended receiver in the corner. And that's a long way. I think it's number 18. Yep. Is that correct, Chase Monin? Put it where only Monin could get it. Unfortunately, he couldn't reel it in either. 
Monin goes 6-2, so it's a big target in the end zone. But just overthrow him a, bit, a little bit in single coverage. And back to the 23-yard line we go, where it'll be third down for the Tigers. They are just outside the red zone. Let's see if they can crack that 20-yard line here. Wilker to throw. Cavs coming after him. He steps up and gets away from the first guy, but not the second and the third. He's going to be short of that red zone area. Our red zone sponsor tonight is Wapakoneta Ford. And they're going to try and kick this. And I like the thought. It's fourth and long. Again, you're, you're not just thinking about this game. You're thinking about the playoffs. And Leland Boland's going to line it up. It's going to be a 40-yard attempt. He missed earlier from 44. The holder is Monin. Chase puts it down. Here's the kick. It's going to go up, and it's going to be just a bit short. And so we're going to have a second missed field goal tonight, both of them from pretty good distance. Yeah, I'm, it's out there. I'm sure he can nail that again. We know he has the leg. Just got under the ball and popped it up. But, again, I, they can take this now, and they can look at it, and they can learn from it because, again, uh, we see Versailles even at a 5-5. Uh, five and five. If they would lose tonight and lose next week to St. Henry, we see them getting in. If they can get one of these wins out of the next two weeks, maybe they get a home game, Mark. So there's still a lot on the line for Versailles, and you're looking to get better on every play. At St. Henry next week, Coldwater will host Marion Local on – I guess you might call it a big game next week. I think so. Um, of course. Uh, maybe just because of the 50-50. Uh, a lot of things will be going on next week. And a new quarterback in. This is number two, Caleb Schreyer. And he will hand off. Schreyer typically a split end for course, Coldwater. Uh, tonight, assuming that Marion Local hangs on to win, they will tie the state record for consecutive victories. Held by Delphi St. John's and a win over Coldwater next week would break that record for most consecutive victories. 58 this week, 57 this week, and 58 next week. I have to look again. I think it's 57 this week and 58 yes. next. And do you know who stopped St. John's winning streak? I do not. Marion Local. Did they really? Mm -hmm. How about that? Here's Schreyer trying to run the edge, and he will go down at about the 22-yard line. Marion Local stopped that winning streak by St. John's and won their first state championship that year. They beat St. John's in the state semifinal. Now, unfortunately, I can't tell you the year. <laughs> Got to be able to finish it off, right? I'm not able to do that. I apologize. Well, I do know that if you go into the high school gymnasium at Marion Local, there is a trophy case for only state champions in all sports, of course. They've won state track the last two years in a row. They've won basketball, that girls sports. It's a, it's a great program. Down. Look, here it comes off the edge. Schreyer's got room to run. He's going to pick up. Nope, he's not. He's going to go down just short of the first down. I thought he was going to get there, Dave. Yeah. Uh, he's going to get to the 29. Yeah, Travis Dirksen does a nice job of fighting off his block and then getting Schreyer down before the first down and Coldwater's going to punt for the first time tonight. It is, and Owen Kunk will come in to do his duties. He has a 38.4 yard average, but hasn't punted very many times this year. I think eight, if my meager brain is working correctly. But either way, this will be his first of tonight in the ninth game of the season. Maybe his ninth punt of the year. He might be tired after celebrating that touchdown. <laughs> yeah. Oh, it's blocked. It is blocked. And Versailles gets a great field position on the blocked punt. And here's Versailles with a minute to go in third quarter. A great opportunity for them to get another seven on the board here. But, again, if you're cold water, you're going to break that down on film. Again, yeah. we don't punt very much. we got to be able to execute it when we do uh, put ourselves in that position. And right there, Versailles, they found some – Openings in that line, they come through. Now they got an opportunity to put six on the board. That they do. They're on the 17-yard line of the Cavaliers. 
Wilker's in the game now with Francis beside him. Here's Wilker to throw. Snap throw out. Caught. Put this into the hands of Tyler Bargy. I really like how Tyler, when he caught that football, he really secured it, Mark. Found an opening to the middle, but he had both hands on the football with all of his yak, his yards after catch. And that will bring our third quarter to the end with the Versailles Tigers in the Wapak Four, Wapak in the Four and Red Zone. Back for the fourth quarter after this, you're watching high school football on WOSN. We head to the fourth quarter here at Versailles. Our presenting sponsor tonight is the People's Bank. We are invested in the communities we serve. Your bank, your way. And our quarter sponsor here for quarter number four is Rural First, the leader in rural lending. Rural First can help you live closer to what matters. First and goal from the eight mark. Again, I really like the demeanor in the Versailles huddle. Coach Jones talking to his team along with his coaching staff. All eyes locked in. Let's go down here and let's push this into the, the end zone here at the beginning of the fourth quarter. I was thinking at some point in time, Coach would want to get Wilker out and, and Francis out and some of those guys out so that they could, you know, not be dinged up heading into next week, but chance to score. They're back in the football game. I formation, Francis is deep. Going to roll out. Wilker's got He's a man. Got Francis open the end zone and finally snaps it to him. <laughs> we, we got the sales coaching staff down the way from us going, throwing the football, will you? Yeah. We had a great angle yeah. of it. He was wide open, and he does score. I didn't really see a signal from the officials, but Leland Boland is coming in to kick it. So nicely done. I think Wilker just wanted Coldwater to see, I got a guy wide open, I'm gonna wait a long time and make you guys at least get close to him before I toss it to him. That makes it 49-13 with Bolin on to do the PAT work. And Bolin snaps it through. Our touchdown sponsor tonight is Burke Petroleum. Now offering propane for residential, farm, commercial, industrial users. Burke Petroleum, dependable and available at 800-776-3097-4914 Cavs. Back in a minute, you're watching High School Football on WOSN. Our timeout sponsor has been Lee's, famous recipe chicken and lima, Wapak, Delphus, and St. Mary's. Call Lee's for all your catering needs. Lee's, famous recipe chicken, where home style happens here. Mark, we've seen Leland Bolin uh, try a couple field goals. He's missed both of those, but we talked about does he have the leg or not. That extra point yeah. right there, it almost went over the concession stand down there, I believe, at the east end of the stadium. It would have been good by, by 40 easily. Here's Bolin's kickoff. It's going to sail up in the air and head down to Elander on the far side. Elander's got a crease over here on this side. He got a great block by Carson Holman, and eventually he's going to go down right around. Oh, we got a flag on this one. He's going to go down right around the 42. Yeah, was that block maybe a little too good? Was it a block uh, in the back? I think the flag's further up the field. Yeah, I, I don't think, think that was face it. Mask. I think okay. that was the call. Nope, nope, they're going to pick, pick it, it up. up. Yeah, okay, okay, pick it up. Coldwater will start now on their own 42-yard line. Caleb Schreyer ran the offense the last possession, and I think he's headed to the sideline. Nope, he's talking to Coach Otten. That's why he's over on the sideline, so he's going to come back to run the offense again this possession. Let's see who's got in the backfield with him. Let's see Brady Layfield's with him. He wears number eight. And I know we have yeah. some subs in the front line, the defensive front four for Versailles. Brady's actually going to be a wide out on this possession. So he's in the backfield here in a moment. Here's Schreyer, and he will get just lose a couple of yards, maybe back to the 40. Yeah, that's one thing you don't want to do in MAC football. 
hesitate. Yes, absolutely. And he hesitated a little bit there, and Versailles, Johnny on the spot, they get him in the backfield. Braxton Taylor was in the backfield with him. That's who the other running back was, number 29. And Schreyer was facing, well, they've got to give him the 41, so it'll be second and 11. And again, Taylor's in the backfield, this time to the right hip of Caleb Schreyer. Schreyer's going to look, got a man coming open in the middle, and he put the ball right on the money to Caden Obringer. Tackled there by Keaton Tobin. Ultimate outdoor first down to the 46 of Versailles. I stand corrected. Chase Monin on the tackle. Where are you at next Friday night, Mr. Bowen? I am at Wapak to watch Wapak and Salina. Actually, that game's at Salina, but I have Wapak and Salina to see if okay. Wapak can finish things off. They have already secured a WBL championship. At least tied for it, a share of it. Schreyer, handoff this time on a reverse action by Carter Freed. Carter Freed's headed to the end zone and going to get knocked down at about the six-yard line. And we're going to get Jace Watron injured on that one. That would not be a good thing for Versailles. He's a key player to this team. And, and well, Chase Monin, both uh, of them. Again, you can't flaunt the effort for, for <laughs> these Versailles Tigers. Just so impressed by they don't care what the score is on the scoreboard. They're going to keep playing hard. But Watron and Monin both dinged up a little bit on that play. Both coming off. We're in the Wapakoneta Ford red zone. Both those young men came out with the football down to the five-yard line. It's a 41-yard pickup for number 16, Carter Freed, 5'10", sophomore. Taylor's in the backfield. So is number 23, Derek Dews, as Schreyer's going to go under center. The good old I formation. Remember back in the day, love seeing it again. Picked that up when I had cold water against Minster. Schreyer letting the play clock run down. Pitch, Taylor picks his way inside the five. Great vision there by Taylor, reads the, the play, sees everything's kicking out, so he cuts it up. Versailles keeps him out of the end zone, but he made something out of nothing. He was going to be taken down for a loss and gets back to the four-yard line. He does pick up a yard. So it'll be... Second and goal from the four. I will be at Bath High School next Ooh. week as they match up with the St. Mary's in a really interesting game week 10 yes. playoff yes. matchup type thing. Mm -hmm. How they prepare. Taylor trying to get into the goal line. Doesn't make it that time either. Of course, kind of a contrast in style. Exactly. The, the ground-oriented St. Mary's team and a very – Pass happy, but also got a good running back in Mikey Hale, back Bath Wildcats. Yeah, and, and Bath is just sort of schizophrenic. The, their season, way to say it, they, they, I've not seen them live, but watching their scores, it's just one night, just when you think this is who they are, they do something totally different as far as a final my score is concerned. First opportunity to work with Jack McGuire there next week. There you go. Now, back, Jack is surviving a subpar high school education. Uh-oh. He sat in my government class. I knew that's where you are going to go. <laughs> Here's Taylor. Takes the pitch. Schreyer fakes the pitch, keeps it himself. Does he get to the end zone? He does not. Well defended that time by the Versailles Tigers, and we're going to go to fourth down. So decision time here. Coldwater going to try and kick an extra point to work on that, or are they going to go for it? I think – this is a good time to practice. Yeah, this yes. is a good time to practice mm -hmm. Bryce Cushow, yep. who is a five for five in the field goal business coming into tonight. His long is 44 yards. We saw him make that last week, and this will be a what about a 19 yarder? Mm -hmm. Balin Blockberger, the holder, and here's the kick, and it goes, and it's through. That makes. Our, our Mr. Cushow, six for six in his field goal opportunities this year, pushes the score to 52-14. Back in a moment, you're watching High School Football on WSN.
Coldwater. 52-yard, 58-yard drive that time that accumulated in a 19-yard field goal. What a weapon Cusho is, you know? He, he, you know he can get you, get you three anytime you're down around the 30-yard line or so. Kicks the ball in the end zone often. Yeah, any level that lets you, as an offensive coordinator, gamble a little bit more because you know that got, you've got that three in your back pocket. Coming this way. Looking to see who that running. That's Watron. Yeah, he's back in the game. Gets <laughs> he hit just pretty took hard. Blasted yeah. again. Uh huh. But another nice run back. It Sales was. Has had good run backs on the kickoffs throughout the night. Just when I was thinking we're not going to see that young man anymore this evening, he wants to be healthy to play next week, and he's back to running a kickback. Good for him. Out to the 37-yard line goes the Versailles Tigers, and looks like Wilker's still going to play quarterback. He's over here on the sideline talking to coach anyway. And here comes Ethan Wilker back into the game, 6'1 junior. Two assistant coaches signaling in plays as well, making sure – Connor Stallions on the other side of the field can't decipher it. That's cold. That's really cold, Mr. Bowen. Wilker's going to run it this time. Got a couple guys out in front of him. They pulled to get some space to, to take him. How about the block out here? <laughs> you see number, number 28, Landon Kanapke, just shoved a, a JV player from, from Coldwater about 10 yards downfield and out of bounds. Well, he may be a JV player, but he probably is his age or maybe even older. Yeah, so good point. Landon doing his job. Nine-yard pickup by Wilker. Pulled a couple guys that time. Out to the 46-yard line with 3.35 to go here in this football game. Coldwater's been in control of. So they've had, what, one possession? Two possessions that didn't score, right? The opening game and then mm -hmm. the blocked punt. Yes. Here's Wilker again. Back to throw. Wilker's going to throw it deep, and he's got a man out here, and he overthrows number 21, Nicholas Meyer, a sophomore. Pretty good coverage by the Cavaliers that time. Yeah, good coverage downfield by Coldwater. Not fooled on that double move at all. Third and short, probably two down territory, but you want to get the first here and then continue your drive from there as we're under three minutes to go. Back to the line of scrimmage they come. That number 44 is in the backfield now, along with Wilker. Number 44 is Luke Borchers, also a sophomore. And Wilker's going to run it again. Up the middle he goes this time. And he will push into Cavalier territory, and he will pick up an ultimate outdoor first down. Number 54 for Versailles dinged up a little bit there. Logan Netterman. And uh, Nerderman. I knew I would mispronounce that name because I'm used to Nettermans and he's Nerderman. You I had apologize. a school board member named Netterman, didn't you? We sure did. College teammate of mine. Mm -hmm. Who Who's better one-on-one because you guys oh, are both was. big. He was, he was left-handed and good. Shoot, I guarded him in old man's league. I don't remember him being left-handed. <laughs> I guess that speaks to my defense. Pitch out. 46 headed this way. Number 46 is Brandon Patton. There's Brant Patton. 64 and 86. Josh Ward. Patton. And looking for where this one goes down. It's going to be another ultimate outdoor first down as the ball is to the 35 yard line. We'll give him a 10 yard pickup and another ultimate outdoor first down. Josh Rare and Bennett Spriggs on the tackle. Patton stays in the backfield. Wilker's going to fake a throw. Well defended. Now he's going to roll right, throwing the ball to the end zone, and it's going to be overthrown. He had uh, Cade Schwartz out there. You mentioned it earlier, Ethan Wilker with a shotgun for an arm, he's and he put it on display right there. He was rolling out on the run and overthrew everyone. I, I, I'm looking. He's going to take a break now and head to the sidelines. Ben Selber's going to enter. This is this is good. You hear the crowd in response? Yeah. He broke collarbone back early in the season, had surgery. He's back in here, a chance to play a little bit, number uh, five. Ben Subler, 5'11", senior, 
final home game unless they get a playoff game here. Good for him. Yes. He's going to take and run himself and head to the sideline and go out of bounds. And I think we were both looking to see if yeah, they'd stop the clock so he'd get too. another play. The only way they're going to get a play is if for sales hustles to the line of scrimmage. Glad to see Ben get a chance to play a yes. little bit this evening. Final game as a senior. And they're going to try to squeeze off one more play. He's going to look to throw again. Chased out of the pocket. He's got some room to run. Subler's got the ground. And Kraut hoping he can score, does he? No, he's going to get dragged down to 10. And that will be the final play of this particular football game. The Coldwater Cavaliers take a 52-14 victory tonight over Versailles. And Dave, that sets up a lot of things for them next week. It sure does. Two undefeated teams as far as we know. We know Coldwater definitely is going into that game. Um, we'll find out what the final of Marion Local and Minster is. But it's a showdown in the MAC going into week 10. And again, Coldwater, they stayed locked in tonight. They were very, very strong on both sides of the football, and they have put themselves in a position to earn the right to play in that type of game next and week. Versailles will drop to four and five on the, on the season. They go to St. Henry next week in their final regular season action. I think our scoreboard sponsor tonight, that's Holman's Insurance. Our first down sponsor was Ultimate Outdoor. Touchdown sponsor was Burke Petroleum. Our red zone sponsor was Wapakoneta Ford. Quarter sponsor was Rural First. Our timeout sponsor was Lee's Famous Recipe Chicken. And our presenting sponsor this evening was the People's Bank. I want to thank the athletic director, Scott Borman, here. Got us all set up again this evening, as he always does here. And provides some nice pizza at halftime, Dave. Yeah, yeah. my first time here. Yeah. It was absolutely uh, an awesome night for high school football, and we were treated like kings. And also this evening, guy doing all of our technical and camera work tonight was Jacob O'Neill, and Jacob will take this back to Beatty Road and edit it all together for you to view. Coldwater goes to 9-0 in the season, 7-0 in the MAC, setting up that championship game next week with Marion Local. They do so with a 52-14 win. You've been watching high school football on WOSN.